Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. That is really loud. It makes me feel like I should be a, like a monster truck rally announcer, but I won't do that. My name is Jordan Larson. I have the distinct pleasure of being the, uh, serving as the chairman of the board of Chamber West Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the Chamber West Board of Directors and Board of Governors, I would like to extend a warm welcome to the 2020 Chamber West Annual Awards Gala. Every year during this time, we look forward to celebrating business, great businesses, sorry, greatness and success in our community. Chamber West proudly serves as the voice of business in West Valley City, City of West Jordan, City of Taylorsville, and the Kearns Township. Tonight, we will recognize three finalists of four, in four award categories. Just like in the Oscars, there is winners announced tonight, but we will celebrate finalists regardless of who's announced as the winner. Should be proud, they should all be proud of being selected as one of the finalists. A special welcome to those representing our award finalists. I hope you're all enjoying the reception. Um, it was fun to tour the, the cool command center outside and to look at that and, and great food beforehand. The theme of calling all troops, Operation Chamber West resonates well in our community for many great reasons, including West Valley City receiving the prestigious Secretary of Defense Freedom Award, the United National Guard training base with Apache and Black Hawk helicopters at the South Valley Regional Airport in the West city of West Jordan, and the four military branch recruitment center located in Taylorsville. We've had much military history in our community with the Kearns Air Base, Air, Kearns Army Airfield, Camp Kearns, Army Air Base Kearns, not to mention the fact that many of our businesses employ the great men and women who serve in the Utah National Guard and Reserve. I'd like to extend a special welcome to our 2020 Hall of Fame Award recipient tonight, a legislator for 16 years and currently serving as mayor of West Valley City, Ron Bigelow, his wife Charlene, and his son David. In addition to Mayor Bigelow, we would like to recognize and welcome other elected officials who have joined us for this evening. Congressman Ben McAdams joined us for the reception. City of Taylorsville Mayor Christy Overson, City of West Jordan Mayor Dirk Burton and his wife Janet, Senator Wayne Harper and his wife Kaylee, Representative Karen Kwan, Representative Elizabeth Waite. From the City of Taylorsville Council, we have Meredith Harker and her husband Mike, Ernest Burgess and his wife Connie, Curtis Cochran and his wife Wendy. West Valley City Council members include Steve Bueller and his wife Maria, Don Christensen and his wife Nisha, Karen Lang and her husband Brian, Lars Nordfelt and his wife Jana. From City of West Jordan Council, we members include Chad Lamb, Kelvin Green and his wife Toshi, Melissa Worthen and her husband Mike, Kayleen Whitelock and her husband Dan. I'd also like to recognize Corbin Lee, Chief Administrative Officer of the City of West Jordan and his wife Jennifer, Nicole Cottle, Assistant City Manager of West Valley City, along with another special guest and friend of Chamber West, Major General Jeff Burton, Utah National Guard, retired, and his wife Sharn. Thank you for all of you for, for supporting us this evening. <laughs> to begin the evening, the Utah National Guard Honor Guard will provide a presentation of the colors with the national anthem performed by Staff Sergeant Savannah Rasky, proudly serving with the Utah Air National Guard. Following the national anthem, we will be honored with a POW MIA table ceremony with Sterling Paulson and the Utah National Guard Honor Guard. Please have water in your glasses in preparation for a toast. Following the ceremony, we'll invite Chaplain Cooper to offer an invocation, after which I'd invite you to enjoy your salads as we start our program. Will everyone please rise for the presentation of the colors and the singing of the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly stirred 
screaming and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gay proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? In honor of tonight's theme, we would like to share with you a very special POW MIA ceremony. If you haven't done so already, please charge your glasses with water and direct your attention over here to the left of the stage. We would be amiss if we did not honor the service and sacrifice of those who have paved the way and to date have not returned home. They are the still remaining prisoners of war and those missing in action. We honor them as comrades. The table before you is set for one, indicating the fact that members of our profession of arms are missing from our midst. The table is small, symbolizing the frailty of prisoners alone against their oppressors. Remember, the tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. Remember, a single red rose is displayed in a vase, symbolizing the blood which many have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. This rose also reminds us of the family and loved ones who keep the faith while waiting the return of their loved ones. Remember, the yellow ribbon tied with a bow on the vase represents the yellow ribbons worn on the lapels of thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper accounting of our comrades who are not with us tonight. Remember, the candle is lit, symbolizing the upward reach of their unconquerable spirit. Remember, a slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. Remember. A pinch of salt on the bread plate symbolizes the family's tears as they wait and continue to seek answers. Remember. The napkin is black, symbolizing our mourning for so many who have paid the ultimate price. Remember, the glass is inverted. They cannot drink with us tonight. Remember, the chair is empty. They are not here. Remember, remember, all who have served with them or followed in their service and call them comrades who depended upon their might and aid and relied upon them for surely they have not forsaken you as we will not forsake them. Remember, 
until the day they come home. Remember. Please stand and join in a silent toast. As we cannot hear their voice tonight, there will be no response. A silent toast to our comrades in arms who could not join us this evening as they continue to render service to our country, to those who have not returned from their service of the past, and to the men and women of all services who paid the ultimate price for freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a moment of silence as we, re we remember our comrades in arms. Thank you. Please be seated. Chaplain Cooper, will you please come forward and offer the invocation? Let us pray. Eternal Father and God of this nation that we love, we come together here tonight humbled and filled with thanksgiving and gratitude for the blessings that we enjoy as citizens of this great nation and this great community that we live in. We give thanks from the depths of our souls for those brave men and women whom we pay tribute to here tonight that gave of their effort, their blood, and even their very lives to secure the enduring freedoms that we enjoy. Father, we recognize our blessings before thee here, and we give gratitude for each and every one of them, for our families, for our businesses, for the dignity that comes with the privilege to pursue our passions and pursue happiness here in this country. We are grateful, Father, and pray that we might always remember the responsibility that comes from such freedoms. With such freedoms, we must over look at our neighbors and our brothers and our friends and never oversee their need. May we always remember the keen observations of the great philosopher de Tocqueville who said, that America's greatness lies not in its grand harbors or riverways, nor its plush fields, and though it has all that. It lies not even in its great commerce, but in its goodness. And that should we ever lose that goodness, we will lose our greatness. May we never lose our greatness by always committing to be responsible citizens and look out for those who are in need or do not enjoy the blessings that we do. We so humbly pray in the name of our eternal God, amen. Oh boy. Okay. I stand here humbled tonight. Whoa, what a, what a great program so far. I'm, I'm just, I'm amazed. Our military friends are so incredibly impressive and I'm so grateful for the great support we continue to receive from the Utah National Guard and our ability to work with them in service as well. Good evening. For those that I have not yet met, my name is Barbara Riddle and I'm the President and CEO of the Chamber West Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce, right? <laughs> Thank you. What an exciting night. Um, we're here with business leaders, elected officials, you've been introduced to a lot of them, community movers and shakers, friends and family, and thank you so much for spending your evening with us. I know there is nowhere else you'd rather be than hanging out with a few hundreds of your favorite friends, right? 
Um, we're so blessed with so many great businesses who continue to throw their arms around this chamber as we work diligently to represent the strong business voice of this region and amazing West Side community. And I am so grateful for the sponsors who have stepped up for this evening as well in support of the program. And we'd like to recognize our five-star sponsor, America First Credit Union, our four-star reception sponsors, the Maverick Center and Pink Monkey Solutions. If you guys like the decorations, they've done an amazing job. Our three-star entertainment sponsor, Jordan Valley Medical Center, the Imagination Company in West Valley City. Our two-star program sponsors, Diamond Creations. If you like dinner tonight, make sure you tell them. Intermountain Medical Center and Comcast. And our one-star table sponsors include, get ready, there's a list, because you guys are all amazing, um, and thank you. Aspire Home Health and Hospice, City of Taylorsville, City of West Jordan, Concentrix, Cypress Credit Union, Employers Council, Granger Hunter Improvement District, Granite Education Foundation, Hamlet Homes, Kenworth Sales Company, Marcosian Auto, MaxTech, Mountain America Credit Union, R.A. Johnson Excavating, Summit Vista, Talent Team, The City Journals, Utah Media Group, Utah Transit Authority, Utah Trucking Association, Varix Imaging, Visit Salt Lake, West Valley City, West Valley City Economic Development, and Zions Bank. Big round of applause for all of our amazing sponsors. I feel better that y'all are eating while I go through this, so I apologize. We have a lot of cool things to talk about. So a list of our key, additional key contributors to tonight's event are listed on the back cover of the program, along with the menu for this evening, so at least y'all will know what you're eating. Uh, a special shout out to Harmon's Floral, who provided our beautiful table decorations tonight. The crowd surfing show, for those of you that were unlucky enough to get tapped for that, um, will be shown on the Comcast Public Access Channel 17 in the many areas of the Salt Lake Valley. Davis County, Weber County, and Box Elder County areas with a link added to our Chamber West website in the next few days. It's always fun to showcase all the cool things going on in our community and other areas so they can be so jealous. Chamber West is a 501c6, 501c6 nonprofit organization with oversight by our board of directors who are volunteers. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the 2020 board of directors. So please stand when I read your name and remain standing. And please hold your applause until all the names are read. I'm sure you guys are gonna want applause all, all night long, right? Jordan Larson, our great leader, Varix Imaging, chairman of the board. Rick Clasby, our vice chair, Utah Trucking Association. Kim Gilbert, Cypress Credit Union, our treasurer, John Butterfield with the Jordan Valley Medical Center, past chair, Brian Kowalski, Yamato Transport, Chuck Kravanek, Complete Recovery Corp, Clint Jensen, Granger Hunter Improvement District, Councilman Chad Lamb, City of West Jordan, just brand new on the board, Councilman Dan Armstrong, City of Taylorsville, Councilwoman Karen Lang of West Valley City, Trish Hull, Salt Lake County Library Services, serving the West Valley branch and the Kearns branch. Julie Cleft, the Joint Chiropractic. Corey Holdaway, KMH Consulting and Government Affairs. Chris Carter, Aspire Home Health and Hospice. Linda Lindemann, NAG Tag Inc. Mark Thorne, Thorne and Associates. Nathaniel Budge, Jordan Valley Medical Center, West Valley. Ryan D. Nelson, Employers Council and Stephen Bueller, Stephen J. Bueller, attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Chamber West 2020 Board of Directors. <laughs> I think we may be in good hands um, with this board at the helm. I'd also like to recognize the following outgoing board members and thank them for their dedicated service. If you could stand as well. Maggie Mills with the Salt Lake County Library's Hunter Branch. Michael Finch, PostNet, who was unable to join tonight. Brian Pruch with Maverick Center Utah Grizzlies. And Linda Milner, emergency preparedness expert. Thank you so much for your support.
supporting our board of directors and president and CEO by advising on policies, functions, and other activities at Chamber West or the 2020 Board of Governors. Their names are listed on the inside back cover of the program, and I would like to officially thank them for their investment of time and commitment to the success of Chamber West and to this business community. Thank you so much to our leadership. Appreciate that. Our committees thrive under the leadership of committee chairs and vice chairs. You look at the work that this chamber does, it's not because of the staff, it's because of the volunteer and the capital investment that our members make in this chamber. So I'd like to thank them for their great support of Chamber West in ensuring our committees run smoothly. So please look at that list and if you know somebody that's on a committee, thank them for their willingness to contribute their time. Tonight, I'm honored to have the uh, opportunity to recognize another great legend, legend in our community. In 2016, which seems so long ago, when I joined Chamber West, I reached out for support of our Leadership Institute program and our professional development program. Major General Jeff Burton has inspired many of our members as he graciously supported our programs with his time and expertise with the focus on leadership principles. He recently retired after serving as the top general officer and commander, the adjutant general for the Utah National Guard. Governor Gary R. Herbert shared the following. Major General Jeff Burton's 37 years of service exemplifies that trait of integrity. He dedicated his service to America and the state of Utah as befitting somebody who as a teenager would carry around the Constitution every day in his pocket. He began his service in the military in 1982 and retired in November of just this last year. I'd like to invite him to stand and be recognized tonight, Major General Burton. We will be making a donation in your name, General, uh, to the Utah Guard Charitable Trust, which for those of you that don't know, that's a local 501c3 organization that assists service members and their families in need. Please join me again one more time in thanking Major General Burton for his many years of dedicated service. And now I have my last task. Sterling, you better eat really fast. <laughs> I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our Master of Ceremonies for the evening, Mr. Sterling Polson. With our military theme tonight, I could not imagine a better suited MC than Sterling Polson, currently the Chief Meteorologist for KUTV 2 News, having joined the weather team in December of 1989. He was trained as a forecaster in the United States Air Force, and during his 10 years on active duty, he served a 13-month tour in Vietnam from 1970 to 1971. In 1973, he was selected for a special assignment to the National Emergency Command Aircraft, 1st Airborne Command Control Squadron, in direct support of Air Force One at Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland. In 1976, he was, he was assigned as a severe storms weather, cast, weather forecaster, Global Weather Center, I'm gonna mispronounce this, Offutt Air Force Base, providing aviation forecasts in support of Air Force and Department of Defense missions worldwide. He served as a member of the Air Force Reserves, then served 11 years with the Utah Air National Guard, retiring in 2011 after 27 years of service. He is a current board member of the Utah National Guard Charitable Trust and served 12 years on the Clark Planetarium Board of Directors. Sterling is music director of the Choral Arts Society of Utah and board chair of the West Valley Symphony of Utah. Please join me in welcoming our Master of Ceremony for the evening, Mr. Sterling Polson. We could have saved a lot of time right there, actually. Just kidding. It's great to be with you tonight, and I hope you're enjoying the salad. I enjoyed a bite or two of it. But behind tonight's events, of course, uh, like anything, are many hours of volunteer time. 
And I'd like to invite the gala committee to please stand and be recognized for all their hard work on the 2020 gala. Let's give them a big round of applause. Stand up, folks. Let's go. Come on, don't be bashful. Thank you. This group of dedicated uh, volunteers, many with support of their employers, have been meeting for months to prepare for this evening. I think you will agree with me that the events committee chair, Steve Reguskas, is that correct? Awesome, he says. I got it right. With, uh, oh wait, here's another, this one. Uh, what's, the work, what's the company you work for? Griffles, okay. Biomat, Griffles Biomat, what does that do? Griffles Biomat? Oh, plasma donations. Okay, very good, thank you. And it's, they, their committee have done a great job. Pink Monkey Solutions is new in town, and I have to tell you, I'm impressed. Uh, please join me in a round of applause to thank this great committee. So you, when people come in, do you say, can you donate some griffles? Is that, do people have to donate griffles to make the plasma? No, I just, I'm trying to figure, okay. All right, so we'll continue the theme of this evening with relaxed family style dinner service. And during dinner, we will be honored with music performed by the West Valley Symphony of Utah. So please enjoy the beautiful music and dinner. I'll be back with you shortly. Thank you. Before we get to our Chamber West Awards, I'd like to recognize the very prestigious award West Valley received from the Secretary of Defense, the Freedom Award. That's an amazing accomplishment, and we would like to give West Valley Symphony a standing ovation because that's how important this award is. It's a national award. Please stand and give a round of applause to West Valley City for this fantastic accomplishment. Almost one half of the U.S. military is comprised of the, the Guard and Reserve. The Department of Defense shares these citizen warriors with their civilian employees, many of whom provide significant support to their employees who serve in the Guard and Reserve. And this award is the highest recognition given by the U.S. government to employers who provide the most outstanding support for the Guard and Reserve employees and is presented annually by the Secretary of Defense. So once again, congratulations to West Valley Symphony uh, West Valley City on um, receiving this fantastic award. So now it's time uh, for the awards that we're going to be presenting tonight, the Chamber West Awards. In early November, there was a request for nominations for four categories. The Gala Awards Committee met to review all nominations, selecting three finalists in each of the four categories. This evening's first award is to recognize the Volunteer of the Year. This award recognizes an individual who has contributed great volunteer service for the Chamber and or service in the Chamber West footprint area. Individuals who have demonstrated a passion in working for positive progress in the area. Will the finalists please stand as I introduce you. Mace Molin, America First Credit Union. Mace has been very active with the Chamber West, serving as a chair of, of the Ambassadors Committee with the creation of the Business Connections event. Mace stepped forward and rolled this great new program into the Ambassadors Committee. He serves with dedication, grace, and kindness, and he continually looks for ways to grow this active committee. He also gave his time and energy to the 2020 Planning Committee in addition to his Chamber service. He also volunteers with the Catholic Community Services working with food for needy and homeless. He has organized a Christmas meal and gifts for youth at Youth Futures in Ogden, coached youth soccer, t-ball, basketball for his grandson, and is a regular volunteer for blood and platelet donations with the American Red Cross. Mace demonstrates the selfless quality of volunteerism. Our next finalist, Paul Howard, Chick-fil-A, West Valley. Paul? There he is. Paul Howard is president and CEO of Howard's Hospitality, LLC. He's been operating as a Chick-fil-A restaurant business in West Valley City for 10 years. Even before becoming a business owner, Paul always knew the value of service and truly wanted to make a difference in the world. 
He's an impressive community leader and volunteer serving as chair of the Chamber West Leadership Institute Board of Trustees since 2016. Under his direction, the Leadership Institute program participation has grown by over 300 percent. He also serves on the Chamber West Legislative Affairs Committee. He has given much time to Chamber West with his business sponsors for lunches for other great leaders in our community. Paul has made it to the point has made it a point to give back to the community by hosting annual food and clothing drives, benefiting the Utah Food Bank and the Road Home, working closely with surrounding schools to provide lunch to inspire young students to increase their academic performance and attendance. He participates in and donates to charity golf tournaments each summer for organizations like Operation Underground Railroad, Shriners Hospital, Deseret First Charitable Foundation, and more. He also volunteers in other countries such as Poland, Israel, Uganda, Ukraine, each year with LifeShape, a nonprofit organization existing to glorify God through service to those who seek English and leadership education. Our next finalist, Ben Horsley. Ben, there he is. He is the Director of Communications at Granite School District. He willingly accepted the two-year chair position for the newly created Chamber West Legislative Affairs Committee with the first official meeting held in November of 2016. By January of 2017, under his leadership, priority documents had been created for four of the five committees and work commenced with the 2017 legislative session. He continues to serve as past chair of this committee and has witnessed its growth from the original 10 participants to now over 50 participants. Ben has also served as a member of the Education and Workforce Development Committee, ensuring a strong connection between business and education. Ben also serves on the Chamber West Board of Governors. Outside of Chamber West service, Ben also volunteers his time and expertise, having served in the Boy Scouts of America the last 16 years, including the last three as a Scoutmaster. He's coached over two dozen baseball teams over the last 12 years. He currently serves as the league commissioner for Centerville City Baseball. Ben has spent the last six years serving on two different school community councils, including time as chair. And he has coached a competitive soccer team for six years and, had vol and has volunteered on 14 different political campaigns. And this year's award for Volunteer of the Year goes to the envelope, please. How many of you remember Johnny Carson? Remember the big hat and he'd open? Yeah, okay, this isn't one of those. You're dating yourself if you watch that. Okay. Anticipation. And the Volunteer of the Year Award winner for 2020 is. Will the finalists please stand? <laughs> finalists, please. Yes, yeah, seriously. I mean, it might be you, it might be any of you. Okay, you ready? Ben Horsley with the Granite School District. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you to all of the finalists for their tremendous service to Chamber West and to our community. One more round of applause for all of our finalists, please. And if Ben, if you could come forward, accept the award, we're going to have your picture taken right over there by the Chamber West banner with uh, some great people. Okay, the next award is Best Place to Work Award. At the core of every enduring company are dedicated and loyal employees. The Best Place to Work Award is given to the company that demonstrates excellence in its approach to workforce development. Will the finalists please stand as I introduce your companies. Starting with Cypress Credit Union. Cypress Credit Union was started in 1928 
by a group of Kennecott Copper Company employees with assets totaling less than $100. Over the last 90 years, they have had incredible growth with 18 branches scattered along the Wasatch Front with assets totaling approximately $960 million and over 110,000 members. Cypress is the sixth largest credit union in Utah and is continually working to enhance its workplace culture so employees feel empowered, recognized, valued, and are competitively compensated. Recent initiatives include the creation of a volunteer committee, a green committee, and a health and wellness committee where employees are able to make a difference in the community, in the environment, and in their health. They hold several internal incentive, internal incentive campaigns annually, providing employees the opportunity to win prizes such as trips to Disneyland, gift cards, televisions, etc. All the TVs only have Channel 2 on them. This year, employees could participate in the All in Alpine Climb, the Mortgage Trail, Check or Treat, and Happy Check Giving. In addition to offering an exceptional benefit package, Cyprus understands that having a healthy work-life balance is important, so it is important, so offer dynamic work schedules. Cyprus is proud to have a diverse group of employees who make the credit union such a great place to work. Let's hear a big round of applause now for Cyprus Credit Union. Our next finalist, Ace Recycling and Disposal. There they are. In 1980, Ace began with one truck and has grown to become the largest local waste hauler in Utah with over 330 employees. Dedicated owners recognize the needs of their employees and have offered great pay and benefits since the beginning. They believe in employee empowerment and creating a positive culture through appreciation and recognition. Each year, ACE holds an Employee Appreciation Week during which time the owners host a luncheon at each of their five facilities to provide one-on-one -on -one time with each employee. Their Christmas parties are notorious among employees, both for the amazing giveaways and for the fun of getting everyone and their spouses under the same roof. One of ACE's great achievements, greatest achievements is allowing for and fostering growth within the company. They have implemented cross-training tra throughout departments, allowing employees the opportunity to learn different areas of the company to allow them to progress in their careers while maintaining, uh, remaining in the company. The majority of the company's supervisors and managers work their way up through the company, and as employees struggle to balance family and work, ACE has created flexible work schedules and opportunities to take time off to be with families. They've created an environment marked by loyalty, teamwork, and integrity. Another round of applause, please, for ACE Recycling and Disposal. Max Tech is our next finalist. Max Tech, please stand. There they are. Max Tech is a leading innovator of products for respiratory care, specializing in oxygen sensors and analyzers. They are a worldwide leader in the manufacturing of oxygen sensing, delivery, and analysis equipment. Max Tech's Tech is committed to the principle that oxygen must be measured with the utmost accuracy. They continue to strive to produce better methods of measuring oxygen and protecting patients worldwide. At Max Tech, they believe everyone deserves the opportunity to share ideas and create positive change in the world. Each member of the Max Tech team brings their own personality, background, and experiences. At Max Tech, they foster an environment where creativity is valued and challenges are taken as opportunities for growth. They inspire and encourage one another to be the best they can be. The Max Tech mojo, or special sauce, is the fun people that are part of the team and have invested big in the customer, supplier, and employee. Wow. W-O-W. Using clever avatars, team meetings, swag video work for the all-star of the month, and so on, makes them very different from your basic company. One more round of applause, please, for Max Tech. And ladies and gentlemen, this year's award for best place to work goes to...
Thank you. Can I have all of the finalists please stand? The Best Place to Work Award winner for 2020 is Max Tech. Max Tech, congratulations. Accepting the award tonight are members of the Max Tech's team as the owners Bruce and Mary Briarly are out of town. Please come on up for your photo op. Make sure somebody takes a video for your next uh, employee party. And now it's time to pause our awards for an entertainment break featuring First Sergeant Ben Jacobson, currently serving with the Utah Army National Guard. He will be singing his rendition of American Soldier, a song written by Toby Keith, on the Jumbotron, please enjoy a Utah National Guard mission video. Please welcome to the stage, First Sergeant Ben Jacobson. Sergeant First Class. Yeah, that should say First Sergeant First Class. He's not the First Sergeant, I might just say. But he is a Sergeant First Class, and he's a First Class guy, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just trying to be a father, raise a daughter and a son, be a lover to their mother, everything to everyone. Up and at them bright and early, all business in my suit. Hey, I'm dressed up for success, from my head down to my boots. I don't do it for the money, cause there's bills that I can't pay. I don't do it for the glory, I just do it anyway. Providing for our future is my responsibility. Yeah, I'm real good under pressure of being all that I can be. I can't call in sick on Mondays when the weekend's been too strong. I just work straight through the holidays, sometimes all night long. You can bet that I stand ready when the wolf growls at the door. Hey, I'm solid. Hey, I'm steady. Hey, I'm true down to the core. And I will always do my duty, no matter what the price. I've counted up the costs, and I know the sacrifice. Oh, but I don't want to die for you. But if dying's asked of me, I'd bear that cross with honor. Cause freedoms don't come free. I'm an American soldier, an American. I will proudly take a stand When liberty is in jeopardy I will always do what's right I'm out here on the front line So sleep in peace tonight American soldier I will proudly take a stand When liberty's in jeopardy I will always do what's right I'm out here on the front lines So sleep in peace tonight American soldier
Wow, what a voice. Thank you. Our American soldiers. The next award is Small Business of the Year. The Small Business of the Year award is given to the company with fewer than 100 employees that demonstrates all-round excellence in business. The judging focused on unique or innovative approaches towards growth, customer service, community involvement, and involvement in the chamber. They must have been established for a minimum of four years. Demonstrating staying power, adaptability, and response to adversity. Will the finalists please stand as I introduce your companies. Starting with Hamlet Homes. Hamlet Homes will celebrate its 25th year in business in April of this year, and since their inception, they have built over 3,700 homes in 63 communities. They are committed to providing their home buyers with quality, custom-oriented townhomes and single-family homes located in attractively designed neighborhoods in northern Utah. With a new generation of home buyers, they design efficient homes with energy-efficient appliances, windows, doors, and the option to include solar panels good idea, and offer safety and money-saving features. They understand that buying a home is the biggest purchase a person can make and can be done and can be one of the most stressful times in life. They hold a 4.5 star rating on Google, receive a 93% satisfaction rating from their homeowner surveys, regularly, re regularly receiving extremely positive testimonials from their homeowners, vendors, and partners. They take great pride in giving back to their community, both as individuals and as a team, looking for projects and programs where they can make a difference. They continue to live and breathe their motto internally and externally. And it is great homes, great people, great experience. Talent team. Talent team, our next finalist. Talent team was founded in 1977 and for over 40 years has been committed to providing exceptional service to companies and job seekers throughout Salt Lake City and the surrounding communities. Great service is not all they offer. By matching the right people to the right jobs and providing on-demand access to talent, they help their clients develop more productivity productive work groups and help job seekers find more rewarding employment. As a unique, non-traditional and exclusive staffing partner, they are focused on risk control, meeting your production expe expectations and ex increasing your profit with systems built to accommodate the demands of today's HR executives. They employ the most advanced technology in, staffing in the staffing industry. They invest more time to ensure they understand the needs of their clients and offer creative solutions and high-level involvement. Steve Plyme is a strong advocate of Chamber West, encouraging his staff to get involved while investing his time and expertise on legislative affairs. Another round of applause for Talent Team. Our next finalist, NAAG TAG. NAAG tag. Where are they? Are they here? Oh, they're over there. Okay. Yes. It's NAG tag. Oh, I just looked at these capital letters that say NAAG, and I wasn't sure if it was uh, National Authority of uh, No <laughs> NAG tag. Give a big round of applause, NAG tag. <laughs> A local engraving company located in West Jordan, specializing in name tags, name plates, license plate frames, custom signs, wall plaques, and Latter-day Saint products. One of their specialties is making products in full color. NAGTAG has been around for 50 years, 25 years under the current ownership, Linda Lindemann. Above all else, did I pronounce that right, Lindemann? Okay, good. They are committed to customer satisfaction and high quality while offering fair prices. They recognize the importance of a short turnaround time in keeping their customers happy, which is the primary reason for staying in business. In the face of constant growth, 
They intend to do all they can to help their employees succeed in both their personal and professional lives and to make them feel like they are working with family and friends. Integrity is the core of their business and they approach all relationships with honesty, integrity, and fairness. They show their quality with every product produced. If you can dream it, they can make it. One more round of applause for NAGTAG. This year's award for Small Business of the Year goes to, envelope please, thank you. Yeah, Johnny Carson, remember you, he'd always blow the thing open like that, okay. Only three of you in here remember that. Oh, that's right, you gotta put, that's it. <clears throat> gotta adjust my tie. Can we have the finalists please stand? All right. Good looking bunch, aren't they? All of them? Okay, Small Business of the Year Award goes to Talent Team. <laughs> Accepting the award tonight, Steve Plyme, President of Talent Team. Congratulations. You get your picture taken with Barbara Riddle. <laughs> go team, go, I like that, who said that? There they go. Okay, the next award is Business of the Year. This award has the same qualifiers as the Small Business of the Year Award, but for companies with more than 100 employees, more than 100 employees. Will the finalists please stand as I introduce your companies? Oh, Concentrics. Concentrics! <laughs> Located in Taylorsville, Concentrics is a technology-enabled global business services company specializing in customer engagement and improving business performance. They partner with ambitious and progressive executives around the world to future-proof their business and stay ahead of the competition and customer expectations. Concentric's team members take great pride in being part of the business landscape in Taylorsville. Their strong and ever-growing partnership with Chamber West and their role as a company that is fanatical about success of their clients and their employees. <coughs> One of their core values is to be tenacious in their pursuit of excellence. Their great company culture and environment is the result of a focus on developing employees and over the past 20 years, they have grown to over 500 employees. Their employees are strong, tenured, and experienced and have become a showcase for potential clients worldwide, which allows them to function as a strong community partner. Another round of applause for Concentrics. Thank you. Our next company, Complete Recovery Core. <laughs> Complete Recovery. How are you guys doing tonight? Good, all right. Established in 2004, Complete Recovery was founded by Aaron Meyer, President, and Merlin Jensen, CEO, as a world-class customer service organization specializing in partnering with leading companies to provide assistance with reverse supply chain management. Complete Recovery has grown from four employees to more than 125 employees and have continued to outgrow their facilities. This continuous growth has been recognized. It'll be warm pretty soon, so you guys outside of the building will be okay this summer since you've outgrown your facility. Uh, I'm sorry you're out in the cold. Come on, guys. I mean, this is a tough crowd out here, okay? Their continuous growth has been recognized as complete recovery has been named one of Inc. Magazine's fastest 5,000 growing companies for the past three years in a row. They were also named one of Utah's fastest growing companies in 2019. The leadership team at Complete Recovery continues to strive to create a great culture for their employees, partners, and community. They support great organizations such as Big Brother, Big Sisters of Utah, Make-A-Wish Foundation, and the Utah Food Bank. More importantly, 
With many perks and traditions, they take active care of their employees who know they are the key to the growth and success at Complete Recovery. Another round of applause for Complete Recovery. Our next finalist, Jacobson Construction. There they are. These guys have been around a long time. Jacobson was founded in 1922 in Salt Lake City by Soren N. Jacobson, who years earlier had arrived on Ellis Island as a teenager with nothing more than $24 and big American dreams. Almost a century later, with about 600 million in annual revenue and more than 600 employees, Jacobson is consistently ranked as one of the top contractors in the country, as well as one of the top, nation's top 100 green contractors, having completed more than 50 projects in 2019 alone. Soren would be proud. Jacobson, Jacobson has many notable projects in their recent history, but locally, Jacobson is grateful and proud to be the contractor currently building the new state-of-the-art, high-tech South Kearns Elementary and Roosevelt Elementary Schools in the Granite School District as well as the 70,000 square foot Mid Valley Performing Arts Center, yay, for performing arts, and a premier 400 seat per performance venue located next to Taylorsville City Hall, which is expected to open this fall. After 98 years in business, Jacobson still has one goal, to create structures that thrill clients, serve their communities well, and inspire them to begin the amazing process all over again. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, if all of the finalists could please stand. This year's award for Business of the Year. Yes. Really? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. This year's for Business of the Award goes to Concentrix. And accepting the award tonight, Stephen Smith, site leader. They're all going up. There they go. So congratulations to all of the finalists and winners of tonight's awards. I think it's safe to say that all the companies and individuals recognized tonight should be congratulated for their selection as finalists. Our community is blessed to have so many impressive organizations and people. And I've learned a little bit about some of the businesses in this area tonight, just reading through this script, and it's exciting. I am now pleased to introduce our next entertainment. Clara is eight years old and already making her way around the community as a performer. As a citizen of West Jordan, she performed in the Western Stampede Rodeo this past year and has had the honor of singing the national anthem at other events since she was three years old. She is a member of Rise Up Children's Choir. She recently released her second music video to benefit a nonprofit started in Utah called Nurturing Nations and is playing in the part of small Elsa in Frozen Junior for the Sandy Arts Guild. Her uncle is, the US Arm, is in the US Army and she is truly proud to be an American. Tonight she is performing God Bless the USA, written by Lee Greenwood. Please enjoy the Utah Air National Guard mission video on the Jumbotron. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Miss Clara Robbins. Just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the 
Across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, with its pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say, and I'm proud to be an American. Forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the And I'm proud to be an American. Forget the men who died, who gave that right to me, and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the Thank you, Miss Clara. And I believe her family's with her here tonight. Can they stand too? There they are, right over there. Where? Right there. Yes, right there in the back. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming the chairman of the board, Jordan Larson, who will present the 2020 Hall of Fame Award. Thank you, well, thank you, Sterling. Round of applause for Sterling Paulson, how about that? Just a real quick comment um, before we move on to the Hall of Fame award. If you didn't notice, as we were going through all of these nominated businesses, how were impressed were you? I mean, great companies reside within our, our boundaries. Great companies participate with us. Thank you all for, for being great, it, it's amazing. I now have the distinct uh, pleasure to present the Chamber West 2020 Hall of Fame Award. This award is the highest award presented by Chamber West and its board of directors. The Hall of Fame Award is presented to a profound leader of, or organization which has provided extraordinary service to the community, state, and or nation on our behalf, on behalf of our community. The 2020 Hall of Fame Award is being presented to Mayor Ron Bigelow. I have had an opportunity to personally get to know uh, Mayor Bigelow through Chamber West as we both participate on the Board of uh, Governors and in Legislative Affairs, uh, along with other number of committees together. I have found uh, Mayor Bigelow to have the heart of a public servant and a teacher and a collaborator. Um, I knew that when we nominated him, he couldn't be in the room because he would have objected. 
So we nominated him while he, I think he was on a bathroom break or something, and we, we, it all passed through really fast so he couldn't object. Um, I have learned more about the legislative procedure from Mayor Bigelow than I ever got from watching Schoolhouse Rock. With the addition of the Chamber Legislative Affairs Committee in 2016, Mayor Bigelow jumped on board to lend his expertise and support to ensure a strong business voice for our represented communities. With, this, with his 16 years as a state legislator, two years as the state budget director for Utah, and with his current experience as a mayor, he has brought much to the discussion and is one of the most faithful attendees throughout the year. As we review legislation during the session, he is often the first to ask, is this a chamber issue? As when he sits at the chamber west table with business leaders, he is focused on business. When Mayor Bigelow commits to a project, organization, or decision, he is all in and has no qualms about putting the time in to accomplish the mission. He is known for his walking and knocking on doors through almost all neighborhoods during election seasons as he seeks input from residents on important local issues. He believes in the importance of people getting involved in the community or getting to know their elected officials and sharing their perspectives as we all work to make community an even better place to live, work, and play. I invite you to turn to the center of the program to read more about our Hall of Fame award recipient, Mayor Ron Bigelow, but at this time, join me in watching a short video presentation. I think of Ron Bigelow, I think first of all as someone who has immense power and who is really has a very soft touch. He's humble but he knows what he's doing and he's willing to talk and negotiate. He is um, a person who puts in the time and really cares about what he is working on so I would say that uh, his name is synonymous with hard work. My first impression of Ron is a wise uh, well-experienced professional who, who takes time to get to know people, uh, he takes time to understand issues, and then he's very good at deliberating and working through those issues in a, a calm and professional, wise manner. The first thing that comes to mind when I hear Ron Bigelow, honesty, integrity, Ron Bigelow is, uh, um, has a wicked sense of humor. Uh, you wouldn't know it to talk to him necessarily, but it's very dry, and uh, uh, he uses that humor at odd times. It's an accountant's humor, as he puts it. And then I think of Ron as a public servant, having served in the legislature and in the city of West Valley, where he is a champion of the west side of our valley. He has literally been in the service of these residents and this citizenry and this community his entire life. Ron's passion for the West Side it is actually born out in his public service. This, this is a guy who ran in one of the toughest places uh, to, to get elected as a Republican. If you're a Republican that wants to win in that district, you've got to earn it. And, and, uh, Mayor Bigelow did that every time he ran in the state legislature. Ron's passion for the community uh, bleeds over. I mean, he wears it on his sleeve. One of the things he's been working on very hard is a, a Veterans Memorial uh, Museum. He's been working on that for years. And uh, we are getting closer to being able to uh, have that become a reality. Most impressive, I think, for me is his care and concern for the veterans and, and his wanting to have a great experience for veterans and veteran families and to provide some memorials and, and uh, a view of veteran and veteran life. We were thrilled to be a participant in funding the war memorial that he put up and how fitting that as an Air Force veteran that he is honoring the veterans of our community. You just really can't deny that Mayor Bigelow is a champion of the West Side. He's a champion of the state. And he has provided a lifetime full of public service that has made an impact 
on our city and will make an impact long into the future. He's a great supporter of the city. He's a great supporter of our valley. He's a great supporter of the state. He's a great supporter of the chamber and he should be honored in the Hall of Fame because he belongs there. Mayor Bigelow, congratulations. Uh, you're a great friend. I've admired your service in the last 20 plus years to the citizens of this great state. and Just very well done, very well earned, and congratulations. I can't think of anyone more deserving. Uh, I have a great deal of respect for Ron and appreciate so much his friendship, his leadership, and I consider him a mentor. Congratulations to Mayor Bigelow on receiving the Chamber West Hall of Fame Award, well earned, and um, very excited for that honor. Congratulations. Ron, congratulations on winning this great honor from uh, Chamber West. You are a leader in the community, and uh, uh, we're lucky to have you. I'd like to invite Mayor Ron Bigelow to join me on the stage and accept the 2020 Hall of Fame Award. Well, thank you. This is a very nice thing to receive. I must admit, when Barbara called me, that I was somewhat confused, uh, not anticipating what she would say. Uh, and uh, it just doesn't fit very well with me, you know, to, to stand and be honored. I would much rather just be working. Uh, you know, you learn a lot of things as you go through life. I started out in a small desert town in southeastern Utah, never anticipating what course my life would take. But with each of those uh, items, I have learned a great deal. But I still continue to learn. I learned tonight that it's much more enjoyable to sit in the audience and to applaud those who are being awarded, rather than being up here. Uh, but as Barbara talked to me about this award, and uh, it started me on an interesting course of thought. Because I thought about service, and I said uh, to myself in the thoughts that I had that service comes in many different forms. As you saw here earlier tonight, as we've recognized veterans, for their service to their country. We recognize those who serve in our police department, our fire department, for the service they give to the community. We recognize elected officials for their public service. And those are the visible ones. Oftentimes we have these visible reminders to tell us about the things that are going on in our communities. But as I went through that process, I thought about the chamber. Now, there are many people who, as you saw tonight, businesses who serve in the chamber, Chamber West, uh, several governments, organizations, school districts, water districts. And I thought even further about what that means. When we talk about service, we have to understand that many times that service our people in the military are paid. They receive a salary. The same goes true for elected officials. But when you get right down to it and you start thinking about businesses, there is a very profound uh, relationship that occurs there. Employees provide service to a company. They bring their skills, their abilities to a company. Now, they're paid for it, but it is a type of service. Employers who employ them also provide services to those employees. Services of salary, benefits, many different things. This service concept 
it permeates our society. Now, I've seen it in many uh, different ways as I go around. Uh, just a week ago, I was on tracks. We pulled into a station, person on a wheelchair, trying to get on, and immediately several people right by the door jumped up to assist this individual in getting onto the train. We see it in the community. We see it in families. We see a family who has a Down syndrome child who requires so much special care, and they provide it, not at the cost of government, not using taxpayer funds, they provide it because they care about their family. People in Utah, you will find in all walks of life, and they reach out to provide service. Sometimes it's in the way that they are paid. Many times it's in the way that they live. You heard here reference to individuals who are involved with the food bank, with many other organizations in our community. They give of themselves. Many acts of service are very powerful. They form a community. You know, one great large act of service is sometimes visible, but it is not nearly as important nor as powerful as thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of acts of service performed every day in every part of our community. What a great thing to be in a country where we are free to do that. But especially as we live in the state of Utah, renowned for its volunteerism, its service, its willingness to give back to their community and to their neighborhoods. What a great place to live. What a great time to live when we are able to participate in the way that we do. Each of you, in fact, I'm sure if I could call up each one of you and talk about your life, we would discover many different instances of service that are provided. We don't often talk about them. It's kind of like when we talk about, you know, the military and wars. We have all these biographies of generals who made great contributions. But the real work was done by thousands upon thousands of individual soldiers who received very little recognition by comparison. But they are the way that freedom is, def is defended. In our community, those many, many acts of service are what maintain our cities. Yes, cities can collect taxes and pay for a number of services. But without the citizens, that service doesn't work. Our citizens assist and support. So what a very interesting, dynamic society that we live in. How grateful I am personally to be a part of that and for the concept of being able to take your time and do your best and to serve where you're at. For me, I never would have thought of the paths that I have taken and many different ones, whether it was in the military or in the legislature or in my community, in my church, in service organizations, they're all opportunities to serve. Those have come at different stages of my life, but they are all a part of who we are, of what we are as a community and as a chamber. Chamber West provides opportunity for those types of services. Businesses, employers, employees, make a difference in the lives that we lead. We receive greater services, greater variety, better quality of goods and services than I believe anywhere else in the world by far. Having had the opportunity to live in a couple of different countries uh, with my family and see 
what's at the grocery store, what's at the department store. Boy, what a great thing. What a great thing to be here. Well, you know, I accept this award, uh, but it's a reflection, it's a symbol of service that is provided across all of our lives and what we do and how we act. And so to some degree, I accept this, but I accept it as well on behalf of all of you. For none of us who serve in visible places, such as ele elected officials, can do anything without the support of the people. Thank you very much. Chamber West continues on as a strong and growing Chamber of Commerce. Um, this would not have been possible without the support of the Board of Directors and Board of Governors, passionate community leaders, the participation of so many volunteers. The commentary that I continue to say is you get out what you put in. And it goes on and on and on, no matter what you do in life, but particularly it seems to be with, with work and service, as our good mayor commented. Chamber of Commerce exists to help local businesses be successful provide jobs, increase tax revenues, help the local economy in our cities and our communities. In the end, chambers exist to make our communities stronger and improve the quality of life for the people living in them. They are a catalyst for business growth, a convener of leaders and influencers, and a champion for a stronger community. They're often considered the three C's of the chambers. I'd like to thank the Chamber West staff for their dedicated efforts to support of delivering on our mission of strengthening and promoting the shared interests of business community. Barbara Riddle will celebrate four years at the helm next month. Connie Bailey will be celebrating 30 years of service with Chamber West this year. Absolutely. Becky Gertley just passed her one year anniversary last November. We're grateful to have her here and we're very thrilled to have Candy Raguskas join us this last August as well. Thank you to our great Chamber West team. If you can't tell, I'm keeping my glasses on so I can't actually see you. I can see what's right here just fine, but I have no idea who's out there. It's great. I'm excited to enter the second year of my two-year term as chair of the board. We continue to represent the strong business voice in West Valley, Taylorsville, West Jordan, and Kearns. We continue to see success with our Legislative Affairs Committee as we work to represent the interests of business with government. Our Women in Business program continues to deliver great programs, including the upcoming spring conference scheduled for April 12th. Other strong programs include Leadership Institute, the Professional Development Series, Ambassadors, Business Connections, and more and more and more. If you get up some time, pull up the webpage. There are so many great opportunities. We have a few new programs that have been rolled out recently, including a community job fair that will be held at Granger High School April 22nd, I want to believe. If you're looking for employees, how many people are looking for employees? About everybody's hand should be up. It's crazy. Um, Women in Business Golf Clinic, a Washington DC trip to meet our federal delegation and a tourism committee that will be meeting quarterly. I encourage each of you to commit to getting even more involved in the chamber this year. We know the saying, if you are not at the table, you're on the menu. Decisions are made by those who show up and many hands make light work. I actually used that phrase last night. Thank you for being part of your Chamber West Chamber of Commerce and for being here tonight. We look forward to seeing you throughout the year. Please drive home safely. Thank you. <laughs>